I broke into the sports industry um, kind of by accident, really. I mean, I've always been passionate about sport, played, refereed, watched every type of sport. Um, and I was introduced by a, a former colleague of mine who I did a vacation scheme with a law firm. She knew and a guy called Sean Cottrell who runs the website Law in Sport. And we were introduced and it all went from there. And sort of four and a half years later, I'm now working full time in the sports industry. Uh, and in terms of how to sort of get into the sports industry, the value of networking cannot be underestimated. Um, go to as many events as you can, meet as many people as you can for coffees or just steal an hour of the time and take one bit here and then that's how I began to make contacts. And then it's incredibly valuable because people then know your name and come to you for advice and let you know about opportunities in the industry and that's, uh, that's what I would uh, recommend. I think the variety of the work is, is the best thing about working in the sports industry. No two days are ever the same in the work I do. Uh, for example, today, doing work in football, snooker and boxing, you just never know. And all those three sports have in, entirely different rules and regulations and different ways and politics involved. So I think that's the most interesting part about the job. In terms of professional advice, I think the fact is, given how competitive the industry is, not just in law, but anything to do with the sports industry. Um, you just want to make sure that, and I think I look at other people and make sure they're not working harder than I am. Mm. If, if I feel as though they're working harder than I am, then I've only got myself to blame. But not many people can say that. So I think you have to show that you are truly committed. And you have to make personal sacrifice, financial sacrifice, to work in this sector. And it takes a long time. But there's obviously there's always a degree of luck involved, but you have to get in the position to take the opportunity when it comes along. Probably the most significant um, work today in my career achievement, I think, would, would have to be working with FIFA and Interpol internationally on match fixing issues and education. So we've been all over the world, all West Africa, South Africa. Fiji, India, Algeria, working with people overseas and understanding their culture and trying to work, understand, get people to work together from different stakeholders has been very rewarding and at this stage, early stage of my career really has been an incredible opportunity which I'm very pleased to, to have been given. In terms of the senior management and to foster success, within law firms, if we're talking about law, um, you know, it's a very structured hierarchy and sometimes you have to allow people who are talented, I think, who show a talent for business development or for client side, to allow them to, be, to go out and actually try and build contacts and bring business in. And I think that's probably the same in most organisations. Don't just treat somebody by their age. If you say, oh, they're only one year qualified or two years qualified, therefore they just have to sit at the desk and grind away through papers, that's completely the wrong way about how to manage someone and, you know, teams need people like that and some people are happy to do that and don't want to be client facing. But if you have somebody who shows some aptitude for presentations or wants to develop, uh, write articles, etc., then you should allow them to do that within the working day. Of course, as I mentioned earlier about hard work, you do have to put a lot of it in out of hours. But equally, there should be some allowance given within working hours to, to develop those skills. Qualities needed are people first and foremost, your, your people skills in every aspect of what you do is absolutely crucial. You have to be dedicated to the subject matter which when you're working in sport shouldn't be difficult. Really, you, you know, if you're passionate about sport you've always been passionate about sport and therefore the fact that you're then working in it should make it the, the, the ideal profession to be in. Uh, you must have sacrifice, that's a quality to be, to be a leader, you must be able to m know when to let the reins go a little bit, that's always skills of good management, you can't just retain everything to yourself, you have to put trust in people within your organisation um, and then people will come to you and um, look to you for, for leadership skills. I guess it, turning it from a sort of role model, if you talk about the inspiration, I guess the uh, uh, Sean Cottrell, Laurie Sport, who, I, who I've worked with, uh, I found his dedication, his hard work, uh, very inspirational. He has sacrificed a lot personally to get to where he is and continues to do so and works incredibly hard. 
Um, he's probably the only person who works much harder than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so in that sense, but I'm not competing with him. <laughs> so so uh, no, and he's, he's a wonderful friend. And uh, this, having met him nearly five years ago now, to get to the point where we are now, uh, I just wish him all the best and hope uh, it, you know the business continues to grow the way it has been. And uh, you know, it's nice to know that he's not just a business associate but a friend as well.